Hello students, how are you all? Welcome to Affairs Cloud, Learn to Lead. My name is Vikas Rana. So students, we have an app by the name Careers Cloud which you can go and download through the Play Store for Android phones. Once you have downloaded and logged in with your Gmail ID, you will be transferred to your home page where you can see all the courses that are offered by us. Once you have purchased the course, you can see your courses in the My Course section. But why our courses are so better? Why we think we provide you one of the best content? Because we provide you content on daily basis. In the daily basis, we provide you current affairs with 20 questions quiz as well as the PDF of the current affairs of daily. Then similarly for weekly, on weekly basis, we provide you current affairs PDF as well as a 50 questions quiz that will help you to revise all the content that you have learned. Then on monthly basis also, we provide you top 100 current affair questions PDF that will be the compiled PDF of the 100 questions of that particular month that will be very helpful for you. And not just this friends, we provide you in English as well as in Hindi too. So both English and Hindi students can enjoy our courses. Apart from this friends, we also provide you banking related question answers, the banking related MCQ questions, the quizzes that will help you prepare for the bank exams. Not just that friends, we provide you a new way of learning that is your infotainment infographics that is a different and interesting way of learning. Apart from this, we cover 20 topic wise current affairs. These topics are important such as apps portals, important days, books and authors days, uh, national affairs, international affairs, sports, defense, all these topics, these are highly important and questions from these particular topics are asked. Also, we cover state-wise current affairs also that will help you to prepare for your state exams. Also friends, as I told you, if you use the code VIKAS10, you will be given extra 10% discount on the purchase you make. If you have any problem regarding login and your application, then you can contact us on support at the rate of affairscloud.com this is our email id and you can contact us on our mobile phone that is 9677333386 hello everyone how are you all i hope you are all good so students in this video we will be discussing important current affairs of 24th of november the session will be very interesting so do pay attention till the end we'll go for first revision friends so let's start first is india and european union they have signed an intent of corporation on climate modeling as well as quantum technology second was that manipur shanghai festival was recently held question will be directly asked to you that where was the shanghai festival has it was held in manipur it was the 11th edition of this festival this was held in the bishnupur district and who inaugurated this it was inaugurated by g kishan reddy who is our union tourism minister another important thing let me uh tell you that this shanghai is based on the name of this deer as you can see here all right and it is mostly found in this region only of manipur so bishnupur district in manipur organized this shanghai festival and this was inaugurated by g kishan reddy and it was a 10 day festival and it was 11th edition that was observed next Next is remember network readiness index for 2021. The rank of India in this index is 61. And here the country that secured the first position is United States of America. Next, next we are talking about antimicrobial resistance. And we know what is this? This is the term that is when a microbe or any particle, any virus or a bacteria or a protozoa, then it changes or it updates itself it becomes a new variant all right a new variant of that particular virus or bacteria is released and that particular variant will be resistance to vaccine that will be resistant to any medicine so that is known as uh, antimicrobial resistance and due to this antimicrobial resistance we have to bring more uh, or we have to update our vaccines and medicines with time as the new variant of a particular bacteria or virus is coming up so we have to spend a lot of money in research and development for for the same only this uh, data has been released by who that is your world health organization stating that world we need to spend or world gdp that is your global gdp will reduce by around 3.8 percent by the year 2050 as per the who as we will be spending money in antimicrobial resistance to fight this all right to come up with new vaccines next next if we are talking about the highest installed grid interactive renewable power capacity it is in karnataka important but if we talk about the 
solar energy the state that is performing the best in terms of solar energy it will be your rajasthan the state that has achieved the 10 gigawatt of solar capacity it is also your rajasthan next kotak general has introduced a usage based vehicle insurance feature remember it was kotak general that in launched this particular usage based vehicle insurance feature then next is karnataka vikas gramin bank they were awarded with national award for atal pension yojana enrollment that means in this particular atal pension yojana the in this enrollment if we talk about the enrollment the maximum enrollment was done by karnataka vikas gramin bank and for the same the national award was awarded to karnataka vikas gramin bank then next we will be talking about tennis player novak djokovic he has won the 6th atp title and his 6th atp win matches with the record of roger federer who is a swiss player all right so remember this novak djokovic if we talk about his career title it was his 91st career title if we talk about 2022 it was his 5th 2022 win and 6th atp title that matches the record of the roger federer next world heritage week from 19 to 25th of november we observe world heritage week all right so these were your previous days current affairs now let's talk about today's current affairs first the first news that we are talking about is australian parliament has approved free trade agreement with india what is basically free trade agreement here that means certain uh, restrictions or levied on from one country to another country won't be here some taxes that are levied on from one country to another country won't be a part of this free trade agreement these countries can easily trade between one or another and with this free trade agreement the trade between these two countries will eventually increase only if you remember recently india and europe is also working towards or india or not europe india and uk are planning to start their free trade agreement to launch their free trade agreement but for a long time even before listis was the prime minister even before that we are planning that that this india uk free trade agreement should work out but due to some technological problems or due to geopolitics this process is still on hold but now a news came that it was australian parliament that has approved the free trade agreement with india highly important this free trade agreement between india and australia was signed on 2nd april 2022 another thing remember there is a term ecta if you talk about it here that india australia economic corporation and trade agreement this is your etca so don't get confused here all right now duties or 100% tariff lines will be eliminated that means what are duties duties are taxes basically so these taxes on the tariff lines will be eliminated it should be noted that the parliament of australia has approved a free trade deal with the united kingdom too and united kingdom and india are still waiting on their free trade agreement all right with this trade with this bilateral trade between both the nation it is expected to increase by 45 to 50 billion dollar in 5 years from the existing 30 billion dollar that is i am saying as there is a free trade agreement signed between two countries then more number of exports and imports takes place as the taxes as the duties on the import and export is eliminated so people tends to import and export more so that is the reason only the trade between the two countries will increase and here it is mentioned that it by in the upcoming 4 to 5 years we will see a jump of 20 to 30 billion dollar trade all right that means from existing 31 billion dollar it will reach to around 45 to 50 billion dollar all right so remember it was australian parliament or india and australia that has signed a free trade agreement next next we are talking about prime minister narendra modi he recently distributed over 71000 appointment letters to newly inducted recruits and they also launched karam yogi prarambh module so two thing you need to remember recently is that prime minister narendra modi virtually that means through online module method he distributed around 71000 appointment letters via video conferencing to newly listed recruiters under rojgar mela all right that took place in 45 places across india remember these 45 places do not include 
गुजरात एंड हिमाचल प्रदेश सो आई रिपीट अराउंड सेवेंटी वन थाउजेंड लेटर्स ऑफ अपॉइंटमेंट वर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू द एनलिस्टेड रिक्रूट्स अंडर रोजगार मेला दैट टूक प्लेस इन फोर्टी फाइव प्लेसिस अक्रॉस इंडिया एंड दीज फोर्टी फाइव प्लेसिस डिड नॉट इंक्लूड गुजरात एंड हिमाचल प्रदेश अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस आई टोल यू दैट प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी लॉन्च करम योगी प्रारंभ मॉड्यूल वॉट इज दिस दिस इज एन ऑनलाइन ऑरियंटेशन कोर्स फॉर ऑल द न्यूली अपॉइंटेड एम्प्लॉयज ऑफ डिफरेंट गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट टू गिव दैम अ हिंट ऑफ वॉट दे विल बी वर्किंग ऑन एंड टू प्रोवाइड दैम एन इंसाइट ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर जॉब सो दैट इज योर करम योगी प्रारंभ मॉड्यूल देन इफ यू टॉक अबाउट रोजगार मेला रोजगार मेला इज एन इंटेंडेड टू सर्व एज अ स्टिमुलस फॉर मोर जॉब क्रिएशन एंड सिग्निफिकेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर द यूथ एम्पावरमेंट एंड डायरेक्ट पार्टिसिपेशन इन द नेशनल डेवलपमेंट रिमेंबर एज अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस इन अर्लियर अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू अराउंड सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड अपॉइंटमेंट्स लेटर्स वर इशूड टू द न्यूली अपॉइंटेड मेंबर्स एंड रिमेंबर रिसेंटली इट वॉज अराउंड सेवेंटी वन थाउजेंड अपॉइंटमेंट लेटर्स दैट वर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड थ्रू वाया कॉन्वेंस वाया वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग बाय प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी राइट also according to experts various data has been released various new reports are coming up that is suggesting that india has become a major force in the service sector and it will soon become the world's manufacturing hub also if you remember in gujarat we are making uh your we are making gujarat as manufacturing hub for semiconductors due to which foxconn and vedanta employees or vedanta these two organizations came together to sign an mou all right also not just this even the youth of india is being encouraged to take a part into the entrepreneurship journey and they are encouraged to start their business all right they are forced or not forced we can say they are encouraged that they should start their own business because this is an era of entrepreneurship and due to which various schemes are also being launched by for government say for example if we talk about infrastructure technology hub 2.0 was launched where it was launched in Hyderabad Telangana in order to give a boost to the startup ecosystem there and here around 2000 startups will be incubated apart from this if you remember SBI SBI will launch a branch in Bangalore Karnataka that will be providing loan to the startups that will be collateral free all right that means no collateral will be provided or will be required for that loans that will be dispersed to those startups even after the launch of this Bangalore Uh, office in or bangalore branch in karnataka bangalore sbi is planning to open the same kind of branch in gurugram haryana also all right so coming back it was rozgar mela that was launched or the so or the 71000 appointment letters of the appointees that were provided to them under and the job that was provided to them under rozgar mela was given and apart from this a karam yogi prarambh module was given to the inductees next next is union health ministry has launched india's first suicide prevention policy nowadays we are seeing that the rate of uh, suicide is increasing and it is stated that by the year 2030 all right we are expected to reduce the suicide mortality by 10% the reason what are the reason of suicides basically the reason of suicide is basically when a uh, mental state of an individual is not at the right point all right he may be going through tremendous stress he may be going through uh, a hard time in his life or her life all right maybe he won't be able to score good in the exam that is the reason nowadays even the students due to high stress they tend to go for this particular option that is a so that is one of the worst decision they can take all right because when you go for a suicide no it will damage your whole life no not just your life because you will be dead but your family members your friends your knowns your circle will also be hem uh, very badly impacted although there is a study that stated that if a person in a family goes through a suicide then the member of that family to attend the same also the risk for them increases because mentally they are aware that yes a person from our family a known person has gone through this process and there is a high chance that they can also attend the same this data was released by recently through a study if we talk about this data 
मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर हैज इंट्रोड्यूस अ नेशनल सुसाइड प्रिवेंशन स्ट्रैटेजी द फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स कैन इन इंडिया दैट वॉज लॉन्च एंड दिस वॉज टू अचीव अ रिडक्शन इन द सुसाइड मॉर्टेलिटी बाय टेन परसेंट बाय द ईयर ट्वेंटी थर्टी विद द टाइम बाउंड एक्शन प्लान एंड मल्टी सेक्टोरल कोलेबोरेशन सम ऑफ द एम्स ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर स्ट्रैटेजी दैट इज योर सुसाइड नेशनल सुसाइड प्रिवेंशन स्ट्रैटेजी इज इफेक्टिव सर्वेलेंस मेकेनिज्म फॉर सुसाइड विद इन द नेक्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स दैन साइको साइकेट्रिक आउट पेशेंट डिपार्टमेंट दैट विल प्रोवाइड सुसाइड प्रिवेंशन सर्विस थ्रू द डिस्ट्रिक्ट मेंटल हेल्थ प्रोग्राम इन ऑल द डिस्ट्रिक्ट विद इन नेक्स्ट फाइव ईयर्स दैन इट विल इंटीग्रेट अ मेंटल वेलबींग करिकुलम इन ऑल द एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन विद इन द नेक्स्ट एट ईयर्स सो कमिंग बैक रिमेंबर क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस इन दिस वे ऑल्सो दैट नेशनल सुसाइड प्रिवेंशन स्ट्रैटेजी वॉज लॉन्च बाय विच मिनिस्ट्री इट वॉज योर Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Next, next we are talking about Arita Patti. The area spread across Arita Patti has been declared as the Tamil Nadu's first biodiversity heritage site. What is a biodiversity heritage site? It is a basically a site that contains various species, various. wild ancestors of a particular species there can be rare threatened species that can be found here multiple fossil beds will be found of a various species here you will be able to see multiple structures that are thousands of years old you will be able to see thousands of hundreds of bird species that are here all right so that is basically a biodiversity that has their own type of ecosystem being followed there all right so recently it was arita patti that has been declared as tamil nadu's first biodiversity heritage site so as you can see here the government of tamil nadu has declared 193.215 hectare of area that is spread across arita patti and minakshi puram in madurai district of tamil nadu as the arita patti biodiversity heritage site and this will be the first ever biodiversity site of tamil nadu highly important all right apart from this remember the notification has been issued to strengthen the biodiversity of the region and to protect and the loss of it that thing because we know as the human development progresses with time we are seeing a loss in the biodiversity we are seeing a loss in the multiple species with time also there was a data released that around 60% of the species has been lost in the past few years because of the human development because of the human industrialization then this will enhance the quality of life of the local communities through various conservation majors and which is the first wildlife biodiversity heritage site it will be your arita patti that is in tamil nadu all right the first biodiversity heritage site of tamil nadu moving on next is department of consumer affairs has launched a framework for safeguarding and protecting consumers from fake reviews in e-commerce as you know when a business is growing up say for example a business by the name abc is growing up so when they grow up they will make their website they will make their applications so as you see in google play also there is a section for the comment that is rate us that tells about what are the views about a particular application is it going good or what are the sentiments in the public about that particular application say for example they launched their application in google play store and people start using it and you are seeing that multiple users are comment giving the five star and they are giving a positive response to that that means the application is working well and even the google play will encourage more and more customers encourage more and more people to download that particular application but say for example that is not working well so it will be given a poor quality the rating of that particular application will downgrade so in order to get a better rating what now companies are doing is that they are hiring fake reviews they are paying customers to just to comment on that particular uh application and to comment a particular review about the application telling that that is a particular a very good application though it is a good or not that depends upon the individual person all right may someone like it or someone hate it but still the companies are paying for those fake reviews this is for the example of a company or a application we are talking about but for say example on amazon on amazon you go and buy to to buy a particular product all right so for example you say for zomato on zomato what it is you go and swiggy you go and check a customer's review on a particular restaurant that is it a good restaurant how is the ambiance there how are the customer services provided by the staff there you check everything how is the food there so in order to 
फेक दैट फेक रिव्यूज आर प्रोवाइडेड बाय द ओनर्स ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर रेस्टोरेंट सो दैट दे कैन अट्रैक्ट मोर एंड मोर कस्टमर्स All right. So for that only, this is released. A framework was released for safeguarding and protecting the consumers from fake reviews in the e-commerce. All right, highly important. And this framework was titled as "Online Consumer Reviews: Principles and Requirements for Their Collection, Moderation, and Publication." Mark this. All right, and it is to safeguard and protect consumers from fake and deceptive reviews in e-commerce. Next. Next is NCPCR. What is NCPCR? The National Commission for Protection of Child Rights. It has launched a training module for chairpersons and members of the Child Welfare Committee, suggesting that on what basis it will be working on it, and stating that what are the various ways, basically what are the protocols that they should follow in tackling this problem. All right, how they should come up with better solutions. Everything. The way of thinking is mentioned basically here in this. training module for chairpersons and members of child welfare committee like what were there will be goals like how they should be working on it like what are the objective they should follow all right everything is in this particular module and what is this training module for chairperson and members of child welfare committee this was launched where this was launched on the occasion of world children's day that is on 20th of november next Next is Qatar. Qatar has signed the world's longest gas supply deal with China. We know that Qatar is one of the largest producer of oil and gas. All right. So recently, Qatar Energy, that is the company in Qatar, that has signed a twenty-seven year natural gas supply deal with China, referring it to as the longest ever seen in as it is strengthened ties with Asia at the time when Europe is looking for an alternative supply. Also remember, China Petroleum and Chemical Corporation will get four million tons of liquefied natural gas annually from the state energy company's new Northfield East project. The deal marks the longest gas supply agreement in the history of LNG industry. Also, if you remember, Russia provides natural gas to used to provide natural gas to Europe through Gazprom. All right, Gazprom was the company they have their uh, pipes through uh, from. the russia to europe but when russia attacked on ukraine all the gases were banned and you can say there was restrictions imposed by european nations on russia for attacking the ukraine that is the reason now you can say there is a heavy chance in europe that during this winter they will be short of the natural gas but as you know big companies big traders big businessmen and big politicians they do backhand dealing also so yesterday a news was released that europe was accused of buying petrol and natural gas from europe through backhand that means through illegal means though legally they have banned your russia that they won't be buying legally any oil and natural gas from them but still through back channels they were seen buying millions of dollars of oil and natural gas from russia Also, if you talk about Qatar, Qatar is hosting the FIFA World Cup for the year twenty twenty three, or twenty twenty two, not twenty twenty three. Next, next is Axis Bank. Axis Bank and Flipkart has partnered to launch a Flipkart Axis Bank Super Ally credit card. Directly remember that Super Ally credit card, or if it asks, Flipkart Axis Bank Super Ally. credit card was launched in collaboration with whom this was launched in collaboration with axis bank and flipkart all right highly important then apart from this remember evolve evolve is basically for small msmes all right it is the seventh edition of the knowledge summit that was launched by axis bank question can be asked that evolve This was the knowledge summit. This was the seventh edition of this knowledge summit that was launched by whom? It was launched by Axis Bank, and the theme of which this uh, knowledge summit for MSMEs was based on is India's SMEs shifting gears for next level growth. And if we talk about Axis Bank, who is the managing director and chief executive officer? Amitabh Chaudhary is the current managing director and chief executive officer. Where is the headquarter? The headquarter is in Mumbai, Maharashtra. Next, next is Airtel Payments Bank. First of all, let me give me a uh, ask you a question regarding this. That Airtel Payment Bank was the 
this is a payment bank we are talking similar to that paytm that has their payment paytm payments bank but if we talk about atel atel was the first company to launch 5g in india remember this news all right first company to launch 5g in india was your atel now coming back to atel payments bank they have launched a face authentication based saving bank account that means you will be able to log in your bank king account that is your saving bank account through a face authentication only and this face authentication will be based on multiple upcoming technologies such as your artificial intelligence machine learning here through these technologies you will be able to see that your whole face will be scanned and we know each and every individual has their own face impressions all right similar to that of your thumb impression if when you are giving an exam when you are applying for a government job some of the time you see that they are asking your thumb impression for that and when you are going for the exam during that exam also they will take your thumb impression what is the reason because each and every individual will have their different thumb impression and for the same remember a person will have a different face feature so for the protection of the saving bank account because it will be a highly secure feature and we know today each and every smartphone is having a face camera all right front camera through which they will be able be able to easily authenticate the person's identity when you are opening and unlocking your phone you are seeing that you are using face authentication in that also some <coughs> phones uh, provide this facility of uh, face authentication through which you will be able to easily unlock your phone through face your face only in your face will be able to unlock it so similarly a type of authentication a type of safety for the saving bank accounts will be provided by atel payment bank all right then apart from this otp feature will also be provided here so that people can log in through otp all right and remember the authentication will be processed through a mobile application and this mobile will application will be developed by uidai all right moving on next is your federal bank they have launched a deposit scheme for the nris titled deposit plus in this deposit plus as we know uh, in this deposit plus the nris will be provided with a interest rate of up to 7.5% only when they are fixing or when they are uh securing or providing their money or fixed depositing their money for a period of at least 700 days all right so this scheme was provided by federal bank and they have launched this deposit scheme for nris titled deposit plus all right remember the name it is deposit plus also these deposit cannot be closed prematurely however customers have an option of availing loans from these deposit of up to 75 percent of the deposit say for example a person has provided a deposit of 1 lakh rupees here so they cannot prematurely close this deposit but on these 1 lakh rupees they can go for a loan of up to 75 thousand rupees all right next next is billbox billbox has unveiled the variable devices for the contactless payments in association with nsdl payment banks and visa i repeat mark this question directly it was billbox that is an indian payments and merchant ecosystem solution provider that has launched a tap tap that is a variable device tap tap is the name of that variable device that was launched and that will enable contactless payment in collaboration with nsdl payments bank and visa highly important friends next next is hdfc bank hdfc bank has partnered with flyware to make digital payments of international education fees easier important as you know nowadays indian students after graduation they want to go abroad and they want to study in an abroad university where they can complete their master's degree or mba whatever they are studying for so similarly for that purpose only that indians will be able to pay their education fees easily through digital payments <coughs> all right this hdfc has partnered with flywire all right that is a and flywire is a global payments enablement and a software company that will enable indian peers to pay for international fees to their higher education institutes all over the world globally all right and that will be able to pay them through digitally all right highly important so it was your hdfc bank that has tied up with flywire 
it also implies imp, uh, simplifies that the compliance procedure for the reserve bank of india liberalized remittance scheme which allows nris to transmit up to 2.5 lakh rupees usd overseas per fiscal year all right that is they can transfer up to 2.5 lakh usd next is here you can see it was hdfc bank limited that partnered with flywire corporation that will enable indians students to pay for their fees for their uh, higher education institutions all over the world digitally highly important and these are the two things two companies that you definitely need to remember high chance of question being asked here then apart from this these they are providing a platform to the indian students where a fully digital checkout experience is provided to them to pay for their tuition fees here students can pay in indian rupees and the institute that are accepting payment through flywire will receive the payment in their local currency that means indians can pay through the indian rupees only but the uh, the institute that you are paying to they will receive that money in the local currency how because once the students are paying through it the portal or the payment gateway between them that is your of flywire corporation that will convert the indian rupees into the currency of that particular university or institution that they are in that is their local currency all right next next is oecd has forecasted the india's growth all right so oecd has forecasted the india's gdp growth as you can see here not just oecd friends we have studied in the last few days about moody's we are talking about goldman sachs rbi all right they all has projected india's growth rate to be around 7% if we talk about goldman sachs they have projected india's growth rate to be around 5.9% that was earlier projected to be 6% if we talk about moody's they has projected india's growth rate to be 7% that was earlier projected to be 7.7% for rbi they have projected 7% apart from that here you can see some other <laughs> sbi world bank oecd imf fitch ratings india ratings asian development bank rbi they all have projected some rank uh some gdp estimate for india's gdp growth for the fiscal year 2023 here you can see sbi expected to or sbi is expecting india to grow at a 6.8 percent world bank by 6.5 oecd 6.6 imf by 6.8 fitch ratings by 7 percent india ratings by 6.9 asian development bank by 7 percent and rbi by also 7 percent as i just mentioned so these are some important ratings that you need to remember and there is a high chance that the question can be asked and you can see that in almost all of them the ratings has been reduced that was earlier projected what is the reason for this this is because of the high rates of interest and inflation and the growing fear of recession that there is in all over the world and even you can see in most of the countries all over the world in big companies mnc companies such as google's parent company alphabet then hp microsoft then your facebook that is now known as meta they all have stopped hiring even they have laid off a large amount of employees also because of the growing fear of recession next is united nation united nations highest environmental honor celebrated ecosystem restoration <laughs> all right i repeat un's highest environmental honor celebrates ecosystem restoration what is this let's talk about it unep has named the 2022 champions of the earth honoring five environmental protectors that is a conservationist an enterprise an economist a women right activist and a wildlife biologist for their transformative efforts to prevent halt or reserve an ecosystem degradation if we talk about it the unep champions of the earth 2022 award highlights the global efforts to protect the environment in the backdrop of united nations decade on ecosystem restoration that is from 2021 to 2030 here if we talk about this unep champions of the earth the annual unep champion of the earth award established in the year 2005 when was this established here you have to remember this is the highest environmental honor bestowed by the united nations dr purnima devi burman an assam based wildlife biologist from india has received the unep 2022 champions of the earth award in the entrepreneurial vision category highly important remember this all right burman that is dr purnima devi burman received the award for her efforts to protect the greater adjustment stock known as hargila in assamese by establishing the 
हर गिला आर्मी एंड ऑल फीमेल ग्रास रूट कंजर्वेशन कैंपेन और राइट सो फॉर हेयर हर गिला आर्मी और बेसिकली फॉर दिस ऑल फीमेल ग्रास रूट कंजर्वेशन कैंपेन डॉक्टर पूर्णिमा देवी बर्मन हु इज फ्रॉम असम हैज रिसेंटली वन द यू एन चैंपियनशिप ऑफ द अर्थ अवार्ड फॉर द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू हाईली इंपॉर्टेंट मार्क दिस देन इफ वी टॉक अबाउट यूनाइटेड नेशन इन्वायरमेंट प्रोग्राम वेर इज द हेडक्वार्टर इट इज इन नायरोबी कीनिया एंड हु इज द एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर हेयर इंगर एंडरसन इज द करंट एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर एंड वेन वॉज दिस इस्टेब्लिश इट वॉज इस्टेब्लिश इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू सो दिस दिस इज द इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर रिगार्डिंग दिस United Nations highest environmental honor that is your UNEP Champions of the Earth. Next, next is Khalid Javed's book that is the Parasite of Food translated by Baran Farooqi has won the 2022 JCB Prize of the Literature. I repeat the Parasite of the Food. This is the book that has won the JCB Prize for Literature for the year 2020. All right. This book was authored by whom? It was authored by noted Urdu writer Khalid Javed, and it was translated by Baran Farooqi from Urdu to English. Question can also be asked that who translated it from Urdu to English? It was translated by Baran Farooqi, and it has won the twenty twenty two JCB Prize for Literature. This book will be published by Juggernaut Books, and it was originally written in Urdu as Nimat Khana in two thousand fourteen. All right, and the Paradise of Food. This is the fourth translation and the first work in Urdu to win such an award. Next, next is NIIT chairman and founder Rajendra Singh Panwar has been honored. Uh, Rajendra Singh Panwar has been honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award by Fiki. Question can be asked that who has been awarded with the Lifetime Achievement Award by Fiki? He will be NIIT chairman and founder Rajendra Singh Panwar ji. Very important market. All right, Fiki. That is your Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry honored a Padma Bhushan awardee, Rajendra Singh Parvar, who is the chairman and founder of NIIT, and he has been honored with Lifetime Achievement Award 2022 at the eighth edition of the Fiki Higher Education Excellence Award ceremony that was held in New Delhi. This was held on 17th of November. All right, <laughs> and during remember the eighth edition. of the fiki higher education excellence award ceremony rajendra singh power ji was on uh, power ji was awarded with this particular lifetime achievement award by fiki highly important take a note all right then if we talk about rajendra singh power ji he has also been awarded with several other awards such as the distinguished alumnus award from iit in 1995 Ernst and Young Master Entrepreneur of the Year in 1999 then Global India Splendor Award in 2013 he was awarded with lifetime achievement award at Data Quest ICT Awards of 2019 apart from this he has been also awarded the India's third highest civilian award that is Padma Bhushan for trade and industry in 2011 all right highly important mark all these awards question can be asked from them Next is Hindustan Zinc in the top three sustainable companies in the metal mining sector. Important direct question will be asked that which company is in the top three sustainable companies in the metal mining sector? It will be your Hindustan Zinc. Highly important question. All right, it is Hindustan Zinc Limited that is based out of in Udaipur, Rajasthan. That is ranked among the top three sustainable companies globally in the metal and mining sector. Highly important. All right. Which is the in the first position? Remember, Hindustan Zinc is ranked third globally. But if we talk about the Asia Pacific region, it is marked first. All right, highly important. Next, next is if I ask you who is the chairman above of the Hindustan Zinc Limited, Kiran Agarwal. Kiran Agarwal is the current chairman of. Hindustan Zinc Limited and who is the chief executive officer Arun Mishra All right next Cambridge dictionary has revealed Homer as the word of the year I repeat Homer has been declared as the word of the year by Cambridge dictionary and Homer it is an informal american english word for a home run in a baseball next LIC LIC has increased the stake in Tech Mahindra to 
percent. Previously, LIC held around 4.863 percent. Now they have the total part in Mahindra Group to be 6.874 percent. Highly important. Next, ISRO. ISRO has conducted the 200th launch of RS-200 sounding rocket. So RS-200 rocket is of which organization, space organization it is associated with ISRO and recently it was the 200th launch of this RS-200 sounding rocket. Next, this RH, what does it stands for? Rohini. RH-200 is a solid motor powered expandable rocket capable of reaching a height of to 70 km while carrying payloads and meant to explore the upper atmosphere. This was recently tested or this 200th flight was successfully launched from Vikram Sarabhai Space Center in Trivundpuram, Kerala. Next is Gulam Abbas Muntasir. There recently he has passed away. He was an Arjun awardee, uh, Arjun Award awardee and a former captain of India's men basketball team. Gulam Abbas has recently passed away as you can see him in the picture. All right. Next. Next is Assam. Assam government has launched a new tourism policy. Mark this. All right. This new tourism policy. Remember, who is the minister of tourism for the government of Assam? Jayanta Malla Barua. She launched. She is the minister of tourism and has of the government of Assam and has launched the Assam tourism policy for 2022. This was on the sidelines of the Assam tourism roadshow for 2022, which was hosted by the Department of Tourism of the government of Assam. The policy announcement was followed by the launch of the Department of Tourism's website and the destination's promotional video. If we talk about this tourism policy, this is a mission to develop strategic roadmap and a policy framework in collaboration with union ministries, various state government departments and local communities and tourism stakeholders. The aim here is to ensure and protect the effective standardization of procedures and practices to promote uniformity, which can lead to sustainability and a general increase in the caliber of tourism related good. That means once the tourism increase in a particular area, then we can see the trade can also flourish. And we know many economies of a particular area are also dependent on on the tourism sector also for example sri lanka sri lanka was heavily dependent on tourism sector and one of the major areas of one of the major reasons of the decline of the economy of uh, sri lanka is because the tourism was abolished in because of covid 19 all right so mark this all right so that's all for the day friends now let's go for a quick revision australian parliament has approved a free trade agreement with India. Then PM Narendra Modi also virtually distributed around 71,000 appointment letters to newly inducted recruiters to recruits along with the Karam Yogi Pararam module. Then Ministry of Home and Family Welfare introduced India's first suicide prevention policy. Arita Patti and Minakshi Puram in Madurai became the Tamil Nadu's first biodiversity heritage site. It will be the first well, biodiversity heritage site of Tamil Nadu will be Arita Patti Biodiversity Heritage Site. Then Department of Consumer Affairs launched a framework for safeguarding and protecting consumers from fake reviews in e-commerce. NCPCR has launched a training module for chairpersons and members of the Child Welfare Committee. Qatar has signed the world's longest gas supply deal with China and Qatar is only the country that is hosting the FIFA World Cup for 2022. Axis Bank, Flipkart, they have launched a flex, uh, Flipkart Axis Bank Super Elite credit card. Mark this. Then Airtel Payment Bank has launched a face authentication based account saving account. Then Federal Bank has launched a deposit scheme for NRI's title deposit plus. Billbox has unveiled a variable device for contactless payments. Bank of Baroda has partnered with solar startup ASPL and AFPL. And Bank of Baroda has opened their first mid-corporate branch at Kochi. HDFC Bank and Flywire has partnered to offer educational digital payment. That means that will be offering Indian students to pay for their higher education fees digitally. SEBI has framed guidelines for AIS for declaring first close of a scheme. Then OECD Economic Outlook has released the India's GDP growth rate and it stated that world economy will just grow by 2.2% in the year 2023. This we are talking about global economy here. Then UNEP Champions of the Earth Award was recently presented and it is the highest environmental honor that is given by United, Station, uh, United Nations for celebrating the system ecosystem restoration. <coughs> then 
Khali Javed's book, the name of the book is The Parasite of Food, has been translated by Baran Faruqi and it has won the 2022 JCB Prize for Literature. NIIT chairman and founder Rajendra Singh Panwar has been honored with Lifetime Achievement Award by FIKI. SNP Global CSA 2022 Hindustan Zinc it is among the top 3 sustainable companies in the metal and mining sector and it is the first ranked company in the Asia Pacific region. Cambridge Dictionary has revealed the Homer word as the word of the year 2022. ACC has appointed 10 new executive directors for public sector banks. LIC has increased the stake in Tech Mahindra to 6.874%. ISRO has conducted 200 launch to a 200th launch of Rohini 200 sounding rocket and it was from the Vishakhapatnam or it was from the Trivandrum Kerala next Arjuna award and uh, Arjuna awardee and former captain of India's men basketball team Gulam Abbas Muntasir has recently passed away Assam government has launched a new tourism policy that was Assam tourism policy for 2020 so these are some important current affairs now it's time for your homework the first question is karam yogi praram it is a course prepared for which segment of the people and this is the first question the first news that we discussed today that this will be for whom tell me next shanghai festival this is a cultural festival that is celebrated in which state important next next is which city is the host of the indo-pacific regional dialogue in 2022 Third or fourth question, which Indian was conferred with the UNEP Champions of the Earth Award? Important. Tell me for what also she was awarded with this award. Next, fifth question, which Asian country has recently released a suicide prevention policy? So this suicide prevention policy was released by which country? Alright, so these are your five homework question friends. If you have any problem, just go through the Google Type that particular question, read an article about it and you will be easily able to answer that particular question. Also, if you find the session to be interesting, friends, all you have to do is comment below and let us know what are your views on such session. If you find the session to be interesting, do like the video and if you are new to our channel, subscribe to us. So that's all for the day. Thank you and have a nice day. That's all for the day, friends. I hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the YouTube channel as well as apart from YouTube channel, you can go and follow us at Affairs Cloud Telegram channel. And if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application, you can contact us on the number provided that is 76773362. Apart from this, friends, you can follow us on the Facebook as well as on Instagram handle that is Affairs Cloud underscore official. In the end friends, if you use a code that is Vikas10, you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code Vikas10. Also, if you have any problem regarding the course purchase, any problem regarding to our application, you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862. And if you want to mail us, you can also mail us on support at the rate of affairscloud.com. And I assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue.